everyone, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my August wrap up. This is the first month this year that I have not read over 10 books. I finished 8 in August and it was, August was a struggle. Uh, at the beginning of the month I was recovering from dental surgery. On the 16th my kids started back homeschooling school and then at the end of the month my husband got into a car accident with a deer. So it's been a hell of a month and I didn't enjoy most of these books. I guess I was in a slump because I was like, eh, eh. I gave a lot of these books three stars, which three stars for me is like, but not really the best, but eh, I felt eh about them. So, oh, let's go ahead and get into the first book, shall we? So the first book I read, it was on, uh, it was a net galley arc. And so I read it on my phone and I gave it four stars. I, it was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. And some of the stories, I didn't know the characters because it's an anthology. So I ended up getting a arc sent to me for a blog tour spot later this month. And so that's The Cursed Carnival and Other Calamities. Uh, edited by Rick Riordan and the Rick Riordan Presents Authors, uh, Carlos Hernandez, Rashin Chachi, J.C. Cervantes, Yoon Ha Lee, Kwame Mbalia, Rebecca Roanhorse, Taylor Kamehia, Sarawak Chada, and Gracie Kim. And Rick Riordan also has his new story in here as well. Uh, I need to go through and mark which ones that I liked, or I need to go through and put the ones like put my ratings but I can tell you my least favorite story was the Rick Riordan one he, it's uh, his Celtic mythology and me being Scottish and Irish I thought I was going to love it I couldn't stand it um because it wasn't really mythology I didn't understand it I didn't see the Italian mythology, or not, I didn't see Irish or the Celtic mythology in it. But, um, yeah, and then my favorite one had to be the Palo Santiago one. I forget. She has to take her dog to a, a flower, kind of like the corpse flower, um, in Asia where it's like huge and beautiful and you get next to it and it smells like rotten meat. She has to save her dog and all of these chupacabra puppies. So, yes. That was my favorite one. Um, and I think the other one I really liked was the Sarwat Chata. Back in the City of the Play God world. Where Sikander is being uh, messed with by this demon who wants to fight him. And then she's trying to get back to the underworld and she can't pass her the gates. So, I ended up giving this a... Four out of five. I hope that since we got a little more of the City of the Play God world, that we will eventually get another book in that series and it's not a standalone like uh, I think Race to the Sun is. Most of these I've read. Like J uh, J.C. Sorrenta, she wrote uh, Storm Runner, and I was I knew those characters. Uh, Arusha, I knew these characters. And some of these stories, like, fit between or come after current books or before current books. So, the Ari Shaw definitely comes before book three because Bren and Minnie and Aru are all together and they don't know about the twins yet. So, definitely before book three. So, I highly enjoyed this um yeah I'm so glad that I got an arc I am going to be buying a finished copy hopefully I'll get one sent to me but yeah because I love Rick Reiner Presents I love all the mythology and yeah so highly recommend the next one I finally got to it and I'm kicking myself for not picking it up sooner kind of like with the third one right now and the final one but since watching the show, I could picture the characters more clearly. And I still don't like this character, but the 
actor for this character I'm fucking obsessed with. And so, I finally read Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. I gave it a 5 out of 5. I loved it. Uh, the, the whole battle on the water, like... And then it's not it's not even a love triangle anymore. It's like a love quad love hexagon, love square. Like what? And I'm counting. Yeah, it's gotta be more than five five sides. What is that? Hexagon? Pentagon? A love pentagon? Oh goodness. Uh yeah, I'm gonna have to write that down and figure it out myself. Do I even count the other one? Cause he proposed marriage? I don't know. So, this is the second book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy, uh, the Grisha verse. Uh, we're following Alina and Mal on their, on the run, and yeah, it introduces some things that was at the end of the show with the Darkling, and uh, every time it said Darkling, Ben Barnes. Yes. Um, I am ready to see who will be cast as Nikolai, and in a way, I like Nikolai, so I can't wait to get to King of Scars, <laughs> but I'm also ready to read Six of Crows, and to read about Kaz, and Inej, and Jesper, and, and Nina with her waffles. I had waffles this morning. They were delicious. Um, yeah. I ended up giving this five. I... I wrote a blog tour spot about, uh, not a blog tour, but I did a blog review and I was like, what the fuck? And so much suspense and betrayal. Mal is a complete dickhead. I didn't have a problem with him in the first book, but this one. If he acts like this, he, well, he should act like this in the show, but seriously, if he acts even worse in the show, it'll be great, but I will fucking hate him with a passion. Um, in the end. Mm. And then, my kids, we all watched Shadow and Bone together, and my kids loved the deer so much that my youngest cried at the thing, and then I instantly knew when the second amplifier was found that my kid was going to like, be distraught when this is shown in season two. Because I, my heart, it was just, like, in my butt. I was just so upset about it. And, uh, and then I've also, I read the Taylor earlier this year, so I couldn't read the short story, but, uh, did I feel bad for Jania? Not really, because she made her bed, and now she has to lie in it. Um, also, mm, all of the Grisha that are now, like, divided, and who's with the Darkling, and who's with the Lena, it's just crazy. But, yes, I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5. I will be picking up the third one. <laughs> very soon. The next book I read, I read it for my readathon bingo board with the the August Gemstone Paradise with green. It's got green on the backpack. And this is Like Other Girls by Britta Linden. I also read this for a blog tour spot. And I ended up giving this a three. It's about a girl named Mara and she has anger issues. And so she lives on this farm in a rural, rural, I, I cannot say that word to save my life, a small town where they're, in, they're not catching up. Uh, uh, if you look weird, or if you don't look like your gender, if, say, she's a girl. And she doesn't look like a girl. She looks like a, she's dressing like a boy. She gets talked about and uh, looked at weirdly, and her mom, who wants to, like, have a good standing in the community, uh, she, no, 
it's like that it's like that small town where if you don't can fit to the norms then you're outed as an outcast but she has anger issues and she gets kicked off for her basketball team and so um her coach tells her to join another team sport to show that she can work well with others and so she can get back onto the basketball team so she tries out for volleyball she hates it she's so judgmental like oh my they wearing short shorts and they have to put on their makeup and eyeshadow and mascara to play volleyball and if they break a nail they cry and then she's like over it and so she ends up joining the football team with her brother her brother's quarterback he's well known and this sets off a chain reaction where uh, after a couple days five more girls join the football team and the boys are pissed they do anything and everything they can to make the girls quit and Mara she just digs in her cleats and just work like goes through it and she even gets annoyed with the other girls for joining like this was my thing and why are you copying me and they say well you're an inspiration Mara and so and she also discovers her sexuality she Mara learns that it's okay to like girls and that you can come out and there's other people like you out in the world and but yeah this is a cute coming of age story and discovering sexuality and I ended up giving it a three I really liked how her she discovered her sexuality I didn't like how annoying and judgmental she was this was a page turner I could not stop and so I had a very bad habit of calling everything gay like uh, where I live it's like customary to if you pass another person you gotta if you got your hand on the wheel you do this to signal and like say hey to the other person it's customary she sees the next meets Jupiter uh, she does this onto the wheel to signal bye to a couple of people, or I don't remember. And she goes like, well, that was very gay. And I'm like, how? <laughs> how? Are all the rednecks I live around gay for doing this to their fellow neighbor? No, they're not. Just calling everything gay was just annoying to me. Um... Also, the back and forth between Mara and the her nemesis, Carly, was exhausting. Like, one day they would be on good terms, and then five seconds later, Mara would see a problem with everything Carly did. And the constant back and forth was just irritating as fuck. But, yeah. Uh, it's a YA contemporary. It just came out last month, and the cover is really cute I really like it so uh, black and then bright pink yeah so I highly recommend this and there's more than one way to be like other girls and with this being set in a small town there's a lot of misogynistic uh, comments and sexist things done and so if you are if you are triggered by that then don't pick this up okay and for the buzzword redesign I the buzzword was time of day and so I chose Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Tushulk I read some reviews when before I started reading this which I never do and the reviews weren't that great not bad either and so I went into this no expectations knowing nothing about it and I loved it uh, the format I usually don't like where it goes from character to character like Poppy and then it goes to like midnight on the next page and then wink and so I really liked how this was formatted it was like very it flowed well and so this is about three teenagers, Wink, Poppy, and Midnight. Midnight moves into this new house across from the Bell family, 
wink uh, automatically comes over on the very first day, first five minutes, and uh, wink or midnight is talking about her outfit that she's wearing childish clothing and overalls that have strawberries on them and yeah so wink is like a mellow chill girl that is very juvenile she's not like a child and she doesn't have like a low iq but she's very whimsy and she has she calls the little kids that live with her the orphans and she helps take care of them and uh yeah it's got sh I love the cover okay so midnight he meets wink and then automatically poppy finds him poppy is his popular ex-girlfriend or girlfriend because she says you can't leave me midnight not until i say so and Poppy, she is this big bully. She has this group of friends that they call the Yellows. And they've got twins and two boys who are absolutely enthralled and, and enraptured with Poppy. And she's in all three of them, keeping them on the line like, like, come here when I want you. And do this when I say... And then Poppy, she's trying to keep this uh, mask up, saying, Oh, I am popular. You listen to me when I say so. And all she wants in life is Wink's brother. So, she follows him around like a little lost puppy. And when he leaves, she, like, stops in the middle of the road scraping her knees on the asphalt and just pounding the asphalt and crying with tears and snot going all down her face and she's distraught. It's a suspenseful whimsy. Whatever that means. Um, it's quirky. There. But yes, this was my first full length book from April Genevieve Tishulk. I read her uh, anthology Slasher Girls and Monster Boys and I, her story, I think it was the Alice in Wonderland one. That shit <laughs> got me. Ugh, that was scary. And I would not watch Alice in Wonderland for a year. And, yeah. That was weird. So, my first classic of the year did not go right. great. I read The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I could not stand the first chapter to Custom House. Did not see how it was necessary to the story. It just mentions Hester Prynne like once with the Scarlet Letter. And so, if you don't know what the Scarlet Letter is, it's about a woman named Hester Prynne. She has a baby out of wedlock, and that is the sin in her religion. And she has to wear a scarlet A upon her breast for the remainder of her life. And she refuses to give up the baby daddy. So, and it's not her husband. So, uh, yeah. I read this because I wanted to watch the Demi Moore adaptation. And after reading this and after finishing it, I have no, no problems skipping that movie. I did not really like this book. I just wish Nathaniel Hawthorne got to the point at some times. Um, yeah. So, very boring. Uh, you learn that she's in prison for having sex out of wedlock and having a baby. They want to take the baby away from her, so the baby is not influenced by Hester Prynne's actions, and she refuses to give up her child. I found Nathaniel Hawthorne's writing very cruel when he was talking about Hester Prynne's body, how she was sagging in places, and, uh, how her hair looked and like it wasn't well enough to attract a man. Well, of course she's not going to attract a fucking man. She has a fucking A on her, uh, like a, on her dress, and that's like, don't come near me, I'm tainted. So why would she attract a man? And then, 
you can kind of figure who the baby daddy is. Like at the beginning, I thought it was the doctor. And because he says, well, this child's not mine. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it is. But then at the end, you are disappointed in the person who is because he gets the easy way out. He has kept the secret for years and years and it's apparently like weighed down his conscience and after he speaks his secret he dies like dude like you, I hated this book I give it a two um yeah I ended up giving it a two so I'm not watching the movie adaptations I started I heard my mother named me Pearl and I quit. I was just like, no. And, yeah. I listened to that on audiobook. I read along with it. And trust me, if I didn't have the audiobook, I would probably still be reading it and bitter about it even more than I am now. The next book I read was The Quest for Anastasia, Solving the Mystery of the Lost Romanos by John Clare and Helen Mingay. I ended up giving this a two. Um, I expected to learn more about why and how the Romanovs were exiled and what really happened during their exile, but the, in the second chapter, they're dead. And the mainly the first chapter is about why they were exiled and why the country... How the country fell apart and how the Bolsheviks came in and took over and how the Russians all formed all these militias and had like one leader from each group come together and yeah. It was mostly about the fighting and how the country fell apart and how they exiled them and how they had to put them on trains and how... It talked about the possible escape, how the Russians were trying to kill off the Romanovs earlier so they could, like, pretend an escape and kill them. Um, yeah, and then it's mostly about Anna Anderson, the imposter, the famous imposter, how she didn't necessarily say that she was Anastasia, but she didn't deny it either. Um, she was just a Polish factory worker who stayed in multiple mental asylums and that her roommate in one of them was reading a newspaper, saw the picture, saw the Aunt Anna uh, Anderson and was like, you're the lost princess and she just rolled with it. She didn't deny it, but she thought that the roommate thought that she was Maria and was like, I didn't say my name was Maria. So, that's how she conned people. She never held a job. She never t had any money. She lived in Black Forest. She lived in the U.S. And she was like a hoarder. She had many cats, many animals. She was a disgusting human being. I mean, she was a disgusting human being mentally and physically, physically, she didn't take care of herself. She let her houses fall to pieces. And mentally, she kept up this charade that she was Anastasia for years. And people were like, yeah, she's Anastasia because her ear, I could be Anastasia if, I, okay, my ear shape is the same as Anastasia's. I'm Anastasia. I went back in time. That's how I'm so young. No! Um, so I didn't really... The Anna Anderson chunk, like the whole fucking middle, this is about Anna Anderson, right here. And then the end, there was like this chunk, I felt like I was back in biology class learning about DNA. It was like, DNA, it means dionucleic acid something and 
it went into detail what DNA does, what it is, how it's contract or extracted, and then it went into like family tree and all its little fucking branches, and I was just like, really? Stuff I already knew, I reread, like uh, Prince Philip, rest in peace. Uh, how his DNA was used against An Andersons to deny that she was part of the, or that she was Anastasia because she, her DNA didn't match his. Um, and it goes into mitochondrial and stuff. I don't know. Maternal, paternal DNA? Something like that. And then at the very end, it's like, she's not Anna Anderson. The end. I'm like, that don't tell me nothing. And it goes into detail about the graves. And that was one of my favorite parts. Finding the graves after it we learned at the beginning where it is and how the acid was used and stuff like that. Ugh. So this book did not meet my expectations. It didn't give me what I wanted. So I'm still on the hunt for a good Anastasia book. So, um, I didn't care about the Russians fighting at the beginning. I didn't care about the DNA. Uh, Anna Anderson, you could have looked at a picture of Anastasia and, uh, a picture of the woman and you could tell that they didn't, they weren't the same people because of the nose shapes. And, well, she got beat in the face by rifle butts. Then she would have scars on her face. But, and the next book I read was A Clash of Steel by C.B. Lee. This is a Treasure Island remix. This is a new, this is the first book in a series of classic remixes. The second book is So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow. It's a Little Woman remix. Uh, that comes out, I think, either this month or next month. And <laughs> I need to read the classics first before I read these remixes. I've never read Treasure Island. So I don't know what is similar and what was new. But I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5. It's about a girl named Xiang. She lives in a little village in a tea house on the river. And... Her mother owns this tea house, but her mother is never there, and she is under the guardianship of the caretaker of the tea house, and she is like, not, she wants desperately to be uh, noticed by her mother and be uh, appreciated, so her mother comes in on her ship with her crew and she really wants to learn the family business so Jiang asks her mother can she go to Canton with her and her mother's like yes of course and I'll teach you the ropes underneath that is a lie because her mother is trying to marry Jiang off and get rid of the burden so they hit Canton and Jiang makes eye contact with this uh sailor this crew girl named on on this different ship and they spend the whole day together in canton and jiang gets feelings for on and then on snatches something so we learned that on is a smuggler and a thief and her stealing this one thing opens a whole bunch of doors and starts the journey um this book it's very descriptive about the setting and the food and the people and the smells it was too much all the descriptions of the food made me really hungry for some chinese food i wanted shrimp fried rice teriyaki wings and like the little donuts with the sugar oh my god delicious um yeah i had to hit up a chinese food place while i was reading this and i about spent my whole nail paycheck ah on chinese food so this book if you don't like chinese food you're good you're solid you're golden if you don't like any asian food you're golden you can read this, but if you like Asian food, then just be prepared. Eat a hearty meal before reading this book, I promise you. Um, but the too much description, it was very 
boring and repetitive and I, it dragged like pages beyond pages was like the roof had the slant and the water dripped off and the roses and the smells and I'm just like girl get to the point <laughs> and the story dragged uh, when she was on the ship learning how to be a crew member uh, scrubbing the deck swapping the deck and steering uh, pulling the ropes for the mast and the sails that was very repetitive it was like day to day no no bruh um, the one part that I really enjoyed was the battle and then that was over too quickly and then the story started dragging again I'm like really <laughs> so I ended up giving this book a three out of five I need to get my own copy because, and I need to read Treasure Island to see what was similar and what was different so I'm feeling that if I read Treasure Island and then reread A Clash of Steel then I'll understand it better book that I finished in August that I started at the beginning of August I read this out loud to my children and it was too damn long I really enjoyed it I'm loving the show on Disney Plus but I will not be picking up the second one for a, a good while and that is the Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart I read this whole thing out loud here's what it looks like my throat <laughs> my poor throat I started reading this on August 9th and I finished on August 31st too damn long it could have been edited down so uh, kind of predictable at the end the show is great I'm hoping the show does a little bit differently uh, it's already different in some ways, but yes, and Constance, not book Constance, but show Constance. I love her. Oh my God. She's so funny. Um, so anyways, this is about, we start off meeting a boy named Rainy Muldoon. He is an orphan and he is doing this newspaper crossword or he's reading the newspaper with his tutor Mrs. Paramel and they see an ad where if he passes if he takes this test and he passes he'll get a scholarship to this prestigious academy so he goes and takes this test and the test is not like he expects and out of all of these kids he's the only one to go to the next phase and so he has to uh prove himself before the test and during the test and after the test and then he meets three other kids Sticky Washington, Kate Weatherall and Constance Contraire. I love her last name and they fi figure out why they were taking these tests and what they are actually doing then they meet the mysterious Mr. Benedict who tells them that the emergency is being caused by a man and that secret messages are being like announced through TV and only kids can hear them and so he makes them spies and he has them infiltrate not the school that was uh, advertised in the newspaper but a completely different and figure out why this headmaster is sending messages and yeah to infiltrate and yeah watching the show while reading this it's a little spoilery but <laughs> and then we figured we saw so many similarities like <gasps> Milligan and uh Constance doing like this it's just it's just so great uh <laughs> yeah I I ended up giving this a three it's cute and funny and very spy-esque but too damn long the show isn't even this long eight episodes for this you could have made it longer but I'm glad you didn't 
because this was very repetitive. There's only so many times I can be threatened with the waiting room and uh, the horrible nicknames that Kate Weatherall was coming up with and the great Kate Weather Machine. Like, really? No. But, yes. Uh, I really want to read the prequel, but my kids want me to read the sequel, and the sequel has a boat, and then in the fifth episode or the fourth episode, there was a boat. So, I don't know if that's similar or if that's the same, but there's a boat. And, <laughs> yes, so I highly recommend... I shouldn't have started a new series this year, but I really wanted to read it. I got this from a little free library. And, yeah, so now I need to buy the second book. Or the prequel. To learn more about Nicholas Benedict. So that is it for my <laughs> August wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed. If you have read any of these books, let me know down in the comments what you thought of them. And, yeah. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on my next video.